Hello triathlon fans, I'm Kai from K Arrow and today I show you how to get your tailor-made hydration system by cutting out this fitting template for your TT bike. So let's get started. The fitting template consists of two parts. The first one is the top view, which is on top of the arrow bars. The second one is the side view. So now I'll show you what you need to do the fitting. First of all, you need our fitting instruction from our website. You need a pencil, a pair of scissors, a cutter, a glue, a folding rule and a carport. The cardboard you can get from the supermarket, for example. And last but not least, somehow a, a cutting surface in order to avoid um, some cuts on your table. So let's go through the fitting instruction. The first um, page gives you an overview of the fitting itself. Now we come to the templates, which is the main part of the fitting itself. First thing you need to do on the top view is you need to double check the 10 centimeters on the template with a ruler. You need to double check the value in order to avoid that we have the wrong scale. Second is you need to choose your computer size. On the template itself we have two examples, the Garmin Edge 520 and the 1030. For each size you need a different um, mounting position and mounting area. For example, the 520 here uses the dark dotted line and the dark dotted circle and the 1030, which is way larger, needs a different position. Here you can see the blue dotted line. So this is the first thing you select. Now we choose in this um, example the Garmin 520. Next step is to do the rough cutout of the top view. Next is that we need to glue this on the carport itself. So put it on the carport, make sure that even everything is even and flat and we don't have any air in between the paper and the cardboard itself. Now we do another rough cut out. The side view, as I mentioned, um, consists of two different templates. This one is now here the straight arrow bars and the template 3 is the angled arrow bars. The difference between both is here as you can see the dotted line. This dotted line is our reference line for um, the straight arrow bars and also in case of the angled arrow bars we need the dotted lines as a reference for the angle uh, to measure the angle of your individual um, arrow bars. But more about this later. But in this case, we will do the fitting on the straight arrow bars, which, because my bike has straight arrow bars in this case. Here as well, we do the rough cutout and then we glue it on the carport. So let's continue with our front view. By the front view now we need to define the width, its, width itself of the template, okay? In our case the original version is here. This is a, our original version. And you can now choose how wide you want to have it. You can ha use uh, the lines here 
has an orientation and this helps us later to measure exactly the, the size, the width of your top view. But before we get started, we do a closer cutout. To do the fitting for the top view, we need the top view template itself, we need a pencil and the folding rule. First step is we measure the distance of the arrow bars itself. In my case it's 12 centimeters. Make sure that you have defined already your final distance in between the arrow bars. I check here now my template, I need to put it in the middle of course, yes. And then double check it with um, your measured value of 12 centimeters. In this case, I know it, it's 12 here, the black line. But this is what you need to do. You need to have the same distance from the middle on each side, of course. So now we do the final cut from our top view. If your value, if your distance is in between some of our template lines, the black and the blue ones, then do it in between. For example, it might be here. And on the other side, it's also here. Then it's fine. But make sure that you measure it before you cut it out, okay? Okay, now you can see the final fitting of the top view. Here, there's no space anymore. It fits perfectly and on the other side as well. Remember here, this is my original distance of the length. And here I did the cutout for you to show what you can also modify. Make sure that this length here is on top of the arrow bars on an even surface. Okay, here I show it. This area is flat in my case. The angle starts more or less here. So in my case, I have a long distance here. It's no problem at all to have an even surface. You see, this is nine centimeters and it could be even longer. But if in your case, the arrow bars, the angle would start here already, or here, you would need to change the length here in this area. Next step is we do now the fitting and the cutout from the side view. So one of our first decisions in the, on the side view is we need to define or decide where we want to have the garment itself. You can see here we have three positions. Yes? And for example, if you want to have it in between the arrow bars, then you need to choose the lowest one. But maybe this is not possible on your TT bike. To verify that, you need to Check if your Garmin can be rotated with, without any collision with the arrow bars in between them. Yes? So don't be higher, don't be above, don't be below. Be right in between the arrow bars and check if the Garmin fits into it. As you can see here, in my case, I have no collision. And on top of this, I prefer to have it, have the Garmin here straight and not anchored. If you want to have one of the other ones or if, you, if your um, Garmin does not fit in between your arrow bars, you need to choose one of the others. So what we need to do now is 
we do need to do another cutout which is even a little bit closer to the final. Don't get confused by those lines here. Those lines are just somehow reference lines for here the distances we may need later. And when we do then the final one, we will do a smooth transition from the top to the front here. What we now need to do is we need to do the cut out here. And this depends on the length, what we defined here on top. Yeah? So again, I show it to you in, in detail. This must be this line here and this line has to fit together. And now I take my pencil and go here in the end and then I can see here the top is this top here and I need to do the cut out here. Yeah? So it depends on what you decided on the top view. You need to double check it here with the length of the garment mount on the side view. This area here is for illustration. This is not really necessary um, for, for the fitting in general, but you need to remember that you need this area here. So before we go now to our bike again, we need to combine the top fitting template together with the side view template. And um, to do this, we need to cut out here in this area more or less where we have the dotted line here. And um, the width here, the width which we need, this is an, an example, but the width depends on the thickness itself of your cardboard. Because it's important that those two parts will be connected together without getting loose or falling apart by itself. So it's the best to measure it. In my case, I have here about three millimeters and go to the top view. So in this case, I have one to three millimeter, which is more or less what we have here in the dotted line. So now we do the cutout and here we can be somehow a little bit um, in the length it's better to cut it out a little bit bigger. Okay, now we need to connect those two parts. And as you can see, it's not really possible right now because here we have um, our drinking straw, the top view, and this is the side view of the drinking straw mount take the top view, put it on top of your arrow bars and if you have here no collision at all, if you can look from the top to this area, then you do not have any doubts that the drinking straw mount itself gets in contact with your TT bike, TD bike somehow, okay? So I can cut it away here, position. So we do another cut out here. we need to cut out this area a little bit further. Don't cut it completely, don't cut completely through because then those two parts fall apart and the side you will not hold anymore. Now we try to connect it here again. And as you can see, we have another collision. So since we will keep here the garment mount, we can cut here the gamin mount from the side view a little bit. And now as you can see, it should fit. And in this case, we have straight arrow bars. So we need to ensure that the top view and the side view are connected 
in the position here of the black straight line. This is very important. Okay, now we do the final steps of our fitting process. With the side view connected with the top view. And therefore we need to get a little bit closer here in front to our bike. So now we need to get our fitting template into our correct position here. And as you can see, it doesn't fit at all. So first thing we need to do is we deconnect our top, top view to do a rough fitting now. The rough fitting means that you need to put this black line here on top of your arrow bars. Here we can see we have a lot of collision with our wheels. So this is something what we cut away now. Take the black line as an orientation on top here of the arrow bars. And now I have already a little space here. So it does not have a collision. Now my next collision is here. And now I need to cut away this area, but not too much, okay? Not too much. But I can see here now, this is part of the stem which need to be considered, the lowest position of the stem. So as an orientation, I cut this away, but do not cut too much. So I cut now not here, which would be more or less the black line. I cut here now the blue line. Make sure again, as I mentioned, that you connect it here with the black line and and in, in addition on that, we have here now our black line here and this must be orientated also with this black line, okay? Here those both lines must be aligned. This is uh, important to have the right position of the top view um, with the side view in this direction. So let's see what we have now. We're getting a little bit closer, not that much, because now we can see we have here a collision. I can cut away here without any doubt another five centimeters. So now we do not have any collision here anymore, as you can see. Our next collision now is here. So I have to cut here away and, and again, I have a lot of space here to the end, so I, again, I can cut away this area here. So I, I cut away here about two centimeters. I still have a lot of space. Now my collision is here and it will be here soon. Yeah? So it depends here on your design, but I need to cut away more here. I have to cut away this area because now I have here a collision. This one I take and if I cannot cut with a pair of whistles um, correctly, I need to take the cutter. This I will do now here on the ground, what you cannot see, just a second. So this is the area I cut it away, as you can see. And then I connect it again with my top view. I align my lines. Remember, align the black line here and the black line over here. And as you can see now, my next collision is here on my brake and on my tire itself and it's pretty close here. So I want to have here at least uh, 5 to 10 millimeters away from the tire. So I do not take this black line here and maybe I take the blue line here. So let's see. Okay, now it's getting better now here, but here I have a different distance to, to here. So what this means is that I'm not aligned here with my black line, you know, you cannot see the black line here. So. I need to make sure that I can see the black line. 
because then it's straight and should be parallel. Now you see it way better. Now I have my I have another collision here on my brake on this area here. And here it's pretty pretty tight, pretty close to the stem. There's no gap in between and we need a little gap in between to ensure tolerances in our development process. So do not get too close. Leave at least five millimeter um, space on each position in between the hydration system fitting template and your bike. So next is I cut this away and a little bit here at the brake. Okay, now you can see here in this area I have about five millimeter space and here it's pretty good connected to my brake. But to the end I still have a lot, lot of space. But in my case the braking cable cross here um, my, my bike and this is the reason why I don't want to get set closer it depends you know here when I go on the top view I can move it a little bit you know you, I can move it I have space to move it you need to double check it with your bike how you can move it but I could move it a little bit but here now the brake ca braking cable is in collision so I keep it like this it's okay for me So next thing is how much space do I need here at the brake. It's pretty close to the brake. It's not that 5 mm I mentioned. So let's see if the brake would, con would be in contact with my hydration system. It's pretty close. So I, I better cho choose the black line because it is very close. But before we do here the final distance, we need to consider something. The hydration system itself will be connected to the aero bars by a silicon in between. And of course in your template you will not have this uh, possibility to put the silicon in between, but I will show you now what it means. This is the material itself, the thickness is one millimeter. So, Remember the last millimeter here of the silicon. It's not that much, but if you ensure here at least five millimeter on each side, we will not have any issues. Yeah? But again here, the brake is pretty close to the hydration system. So I think I will take the blue line here, but in here in this area, I will take the black line to have a little bit more distance to the brake itself. Yes, I have enough space here to my brake. I have enough space here to my tire. I have got enough space here to my um, stem. We did our side view here in the back area, but now we need to double check if we have any collision here in the front view. Because our front view now here has only a thickness of two millimeters, three millimeters. And our default value for the width is 40 millimeters. If you choose our default value, 40 millimeters, it would look like this. Consider this relation in between your tire and the thickness of your bike itself when choosing the thickness of the hydration system. So let's get now to our final steps. So the final step is now to cut out here the length of the hydration system. And this is mostly a matter of um, how you like it. And of course, the, the longer it gets, the more volume will fit in the hydration system, okay? So um, in my case, the original version is the very last line here. And this means roughly about 700 milliliters volume. But if you cut out in the height a lot, 
The original value here is this black line here. This is the reference line. And if you cut out here way higher, because maybe you have a different size of your bike, then you need to consider that you should have a longer hydration system, which means you need to take one of the lines more on the right side in order to have around about 700 milliliters. So final step again, do the alignment here with the black line and here also with the black line here. This is very important. Then put it on top of the arrow bars. Do a final check from the side. Perfect. And then I need to do several pictures with my phone. I need to have a picture from your complete bike. Like so. I need to have a picture like this. And I need to have a picture from you, from the top view. And then I need a pretty close picture from an angle below where I can see all the details. And then I need a picture from the front as well. And final picture would be from the side where I can also see all the um, collision, potential collisions. I need to see the black line, I need to see the tire and the frame. It's like an angle of 45 degrees or so. Okay, this would be the fitting for the straight arrow bars. What is important if you have an ankle arrow bar? Remember, in our, according to our templates, here is the straight line for the straight arrow bars. And here I have a template of an anchored arrow bar where we have the dotted line. On this view, I show you now the details what to do. This is the point where everything comes together. And this means you need to align here the very corner. If not, if you move it like this, then we have the wrong height, okay? Then the complete height would be wrong. So this is important that you are here in this corner and again align here the top view with the side view. In this case, I need to show it to you on my um, straight template. And for this, I put here some cardboard on top of my arrow bars. So as you can see now, it does not fit at all. So just cut this away here. We do then the, the hydration system for you, of course, with here this um, radius. So I ensure that the line here is aligned here from the top and from the, from the side and from the top view. I ensure that I have here on the very corner, I see the black, the black line. I take my hand here in this area and I keep it there so that, that nothing moves here. And then I rotate it. I can rotate it down as long as I'm in the right position here. I think it should be fine. Let me double check it from the front. Here we should have the same distance. And here I can also see that this radius fits pretty good with the radius of my tire. Then I do a line here against the top view. I mean, I can see it then on the side view, okay? 
I show it to you what I have done. I take this away and as you can see here, this white line here, this gray line here. And this line ends exactly here in the, in the very left corner. If this would not end there, if this would end here, for example, like this, then I would know something was wrong. Okay? So ensure that this gray line ends exactly here in the very left corner. In order to have this, the very last picture would be a picture of the template itself from the side view only, in each case. In the case you have a straight arrow bar or also in the case you have an angled arrow bar. Okay, that's it. So finally we've done it. It was a long journey, but it was worth to do this, trust me. Your personal tailor-made hydration system is such a great product and with these little steps I've shown you, maybe one hour you will need, you can come from this template to this final product. And this is your product which only fits on your bike and no one else will have the same hydration system as you have. So, starting from here, sending us all the information and a few weeks later you will get this on your bike and I think with this you will be way faster and your bike will be looking way better than before. So thank you for watching, thank you for choosing k Aero Hydration System. If you have any question, feel free to write me an email and see you in the next one. Bye bye.